3.1 Know and use the definition of a gradient. This video is part of my ultimate revision guide for further maths GCSE, and it's one, the first video in the coordinate geometry section. If you want to go back to the index of coordinate geometry, there should be a button on here on YouTube that will take you back to the index, and then there's an index button there that will take you back to the index of indexes. And any questions, exam questions that I've covered on this topic, I will um, put links down in here. Okay. What do we need to know? We need to know how to work out the gradient of a line given two points on the line. Well, I'm going to be a little bit controversial here. I, I don't, I'm not a great believer in learning lots and lots of formulas. I'd rather people understood what was going on. I will show you how to do it using a formula, but I will also show you what it, how to do it just by thinking about it. Select two points on a given line and work out the gradient. So that, that's fairly similar to doing that. Uh, use the gradient of a line and know the point on the line to work out the coordinates of different points on the line. Okay, so that's just uh, using using the idea about the gradient. Um, the note here is exact values for gradients in the simplest form. I would strongly suggest that you get used to leaving gradients in fractions, in top every fractions in the simplest form. So for example, if you had the gradient 7 over 2, you don't, uh, although that's equal to 3.5, you don't write 3.5 and, and you don't write 3.5. This is a much more useful number when dealing with calculations. And if you get used to this now, it's going to save you a lot of hassle in the long term. Um, going back to this, uh, the gradient of the line, um, this is going to tend to use the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I'll explain that in a minute, but uh, like I said, I'm not overly keen on people remembering it. I'll show you a more, ad a more intuitive way of working out the gradient. OK, and there's three examples here we're going to go through. So let's, uh, what the idea here is you pause the video, um, have a go at these examples, and then check how, if you got them or did them the same way as I do, or if there's anything you can learn from what I've done when I go through them. Okay, let's go on to question one. Okay, work out the gradient of the line passing through these two coordinates. Okay, now if you know the formula that I said on the previous page, and you just label your points up x1, uh, y1, x2, y2. You can just apply the formula for the gradient. Um, so the gradient is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we've got y2 which is 5 minus y1 which is minus 2 so minus minus 2 all over x2 which is minus 1 and then we're going to take away 1. So we end up with 5 minus minus 2 which is 7 over negative 2 and that can be left as minus 7 over 2. Um, you could cancel that down to minus 3 over 2, uh, sorry 3.5 or 3.5 but that is a perfectly valid answer. Okay, um, why I don't like this? Well this this formula is a little bit confusing, there's no real need for it. If you um, if you get used to thinking about the coordinates themselves, so the coordinates, if I, if I just imagine plotting the point 1 and minus 2, so I'll just plot that roughly and then, so if I keep this as my sort of centre and then minus 1, 5 let's just put those on there ok, I don't need a coordinate grid for this, just relatively spaced so you've got an idea this forms a triangle, a right angle triangle um, and this is your gradient. So to work out the gradient, what you need to do is to work out how far across you're going. So you go from minus 1 to 1, which is 2 across, and then you're going from 5 down to minus 2, which is 7. And this sort of, if you think about it in, in graphical terms, it sort of um, avoids errors with negatives a little bit. Um, so you're going across 2 and down 7. Now, straight away with the gradient, we should know that any any line in this direction is a negative gradient. So I don't need to worry about these negative signs here. I just know this is a negative gradient. Anything coming down is a negative gradient. Anything going up to the right is a positive gradient. So I know it's a negative gradient. And the key idea about gradients is that for every one across you go, you want to know how far up or down you go. That's what a gradient is. That's what it's telling you. So for every one across, how far up or down do you go? So if you're going two across and seven down, for 1 across, you just need to divide the 7 uh, by 2. So whatever this number is here, you divide by that number so that you work out how far you go for 1 across. So you just got minus 7 over 2. 
And there's no need for this formula. It's, it's not a particularly complicated formula, but it's another thing you have to remember, which you don't really need to do. If you just understand the geometry of the situation, what's going on here, you don't need this formula. Okay, uh, similarly for this, this um, drawing here, when you've got a line drawn on and you're trying to work out the gradient of the line, what you've got to look for is points where it goes through exact corners of numbers. And it goes through clearly at 6, 0. And looking across here, there's nothing across here until we get up to here, which is minus 1, 4. Okay, so if we're looking at how far across we're going, well, then we can draw the triangle over the top and down here. Or we could draw it underneath, it doesn't matter. But um, we're going from minus 1 to 6, which is 7 across. And we're going from 4 down to 0, which is down 4. Okay, so we know it's a negative gradient because it's coming down, so we know it's going to be negative. And uh, we know that uh, for every 7 across, we're going 4 down. So for every 1 across, we need to go 4 divided by 7 down. So we're just dividing this number by the 7. And that gives you your gradient, minus 4 over 7. Now you could use the formula. Let's look at the formula. So y2 minus y1. Again, you use these two coordinates. So you're having to work out these two coordinates. We call this x1, uh, y1 x2, x2, y2, it doesn't actually matter which ones you call x1 and y1. Um, so let's go, for, you could do in x, y2 minus, y2 minus y1, so that's 0 minus 4, all over 6, take away minus 1, which is minus 4 over 7, uh, which is minus 4 sevenths. Okay, so either way works. Um, like I said, I prefer the intuitive way rather than this. When I'm working these out, I never use this. I just do them. Do them. I can actually, you can actually do these in your head if you if you can got a good enough imagination to figure out how far across and how far down you're going without actually drawing it out. Okay, uh, third one. This is a bit of a tricky one because we've got algebra involved here. Okay, so let's uh, let's have a little think about what's going on here. Um, again, I'll show you both ways. Let's just put a little dotted line down here. I'm going to show you how to do it intuitively first. So if we've got a 6, six minus 1 point, so if this is our origin, 6 minus 1 is going to be down here somewhere. And then we've got a and 2a. Um, the gradient is 3, so that means it's going up to the right. So we'll just assume it's up here somewhere. It doesn't actually matter because we can, we can work out um, whether it's um, up to the right or down to the left, um, just in the calculation. So if we figure out what's going on here, actually it would have helped if I hadn't drawn the uh, coordinate right next to the point on this side. It's getting in the way, so we'll just put it over here. So let's put it over here, 6 minus 1. Okay, so we're going across. Okay, so we go. how far are we going across? We're going from 6 to A, so we're going A minus 6 across. So whatever, say A was 10, we'd be going 4 across. If A was 20, we'd be going 14 across. Whatever A is, we're taking away 6 to find out how far across we're going. This would also work if A was down here. It would just give us a negative value. Um, and then we'll go work out how far up we're going. So we've got um, 2A minus minus 1. 2A minus minus 1, which is just 2A plus 1. OK, so that's how far across we're going. That's how far up we're going. Our gradient is 3, so that means for every um, 1 across, we're going up 3. So we just take our 2A plus 1, and we divide by A minus 6, and that's equal to 3. So that's how we work out the gradient. We divide this, how far up we're going by how far across we're going. So we can rearrange this to get 2a plus 1 equals 3 lots of a minus 6. Um, and then we, we multiply out the brackets. We get 2a plus 1 equals 3a minus 18. Then we can add, um, we're going to move the 2a over to this side to make uh, 1a. So we've got 1 equals a minus 18. So a is going to be, add the 18 to the other side, makes 19. So a is 19. OK, so let's see how that works with the formula. So if we call this x1 and uh, x2, y1, y2. So x, uh, y2 minus y1, so a, 2a minus minus 1. It's going to look a lot like this down here. Um, over 
x2 which is a minus 6 x2 minus x1 equals 3 and again we've got exactly the same equation as we had down here this plus this is just going to be plus 1 and we just go through the motions of multiplying that up and then we end up with a equals 19 again using the same method to solve the equation so essentially it's the same thing but if you understand the the the, the actual geometry of what's going on you don't need to memorize this formula and be able to use it because it's essentially the same thing as so long as you know that the gradient is for every one across how far up or down you go okay so that's section one